we talked about Steiermannlicher from Austria before. Um, you probably remember uh, highly regarded rifles from a country that makes great firearms. I thought I'll show you a model that's one of these, um, well for me anyway, unobtainiums as they say these days. This is the Steyr Malacher Ultralight. Now at first you think it's just a regular rifle but have a look at the length of that receiver. You've probably never seen or I never saw a receiver that long. And this is in 222 and the barrel is fluted and has kind of an interesting what they used to call wedding ring design. Um, now that's going back to, you know, 17 and 1800. There was a feature that looked something like that called a wedding ring. Anyway, this rifle, extremely accurate, almost unknown, but maybe in Europe, maybe our European viewers know all about it. It's very lightweight, I can't describe to you. It's four maybe, maybe four some pounds. So that tells me that this is probably that Dural or an aluminum alloy, um, typical polymer magazine. I have four rounds of 222. This is as accurate as any rifle I own. And one of the reasons I wanted to show it to you is, you know, w with the channel and when, when you have a gun collection and you're shooting a lot of guns, taking scopes off and putting scopes on is, oh, it's okay, but is, there's a lot of screws. And um, so I thought if I could find something that I could put on quickly and take off quickly and put on another rifle, um, that would be great. I never did find one. I'm sure that somebody out there knows more than I do. Uh, but I came up with this and this has served me very well now three times. So you can see there's no rear uh, scope ring. But I know that that doesn't matter because I owned a couple of Wesley Richards and a Rigby from 19, I don't know, 10. And there was only a front ring and the ring was very small compared to this. This has a big bearing surface. So I got a hold of these took only a little bit of modification. There are only two screws if I wanted to remove uh, this scope from the ring, but I don't know why I would do that. This is Swarovski. You can see the Swarovski Eagle. And this is a, it's just a 1.25 to 4 hobby uh, scope. Crystal clear optics, which is what you get with Swarovski. And um, completely solid. Excellent. And to take it off the rifle, I just I do this thumb screw thing and and then I can move it to another gun and then make another video for you. So anyway, uh, unlike the earlier models, this is not a rotary magazine. It's it's just a double stack, but excellent and very, you know, I have to say um, beautifully made. It's very easy to work with and uh, this is an illuminate, illuminated radical, but I, I don't know how to show that to you. It's orange. It's quite good in dim light. And then the barrel and the whole rig. So, um, yeah, well, we'll take a few shots here and, and you can watch it. Some of them have a set trigger by pushing forward. This one doesn't, but we'll shoot that metal plate. And I mean, I can shoot that plate all day long and So only three rounds. Yeah, what can I say? If you find one of these, I would buy it on the spot if the price is half reasonable. It seems to shoot at this distance, at 100 yards, 100 meters, doesn't matter. 200, about 300. I started getting a little bit of dispersion, but you know, my shooting is always questionable at 300. Uh, 400, 400 for the 222. I mean, it's okay, but maybe that's stretching it a little bit. 
anyhow, um, great rifle and highly recommended by me anyway. Thank you very much for watching. It's getting very cold up here, so we'll stop filming now. But I wanted to show you my uh, proprietary adapted scope mount. Very convenient. And this, uh, this beautiful rifle. Um, I'm trying to find one in a different caliber, but I can't find, I can't even find one in any caliber. Uh, not in Guns America, not, not in Europe, but they must be around. I just learned about them late. All right, you take care out there and good shooting. And we'll see you next time. Hi again. I've got way too much stuff on the table and then somehow I was inspired to make um, a little bit of a video on that Steyr we looked at up in the mountains. Uh, I was working on this Patreon video and I thought it might interest you. This, this, this doesn't look like much, does it? I'll set it over toward you. And that's actually a Mauser 66 action. We've looked at these. You can see the telescopic bolt and the box magazine underneath. And then of course, you'll need some triggers. So those are the triggers that go under there. Uh, but yeah, I, does, I mean, that's just a footnote to everything in case you come across one of these. And I'm always thinking of, you know, the folks that, um, you know, maybe don't spend as much time with guns as, as other people do. Uh, but that, yeah, and younger viewers, I mean, that's an amazing action. And the barrel, of course, is here. And yeah, I was just working on 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 a, on a stock f for that particular action. Anyway, I'll set that aside, and that that explains the clutter. Uh, but this is the rifle that we shot in the mountains. And you know, people ask me uh, which guns do you keep. Well, uh, too many. But aside from that, uh, this would be an example of a rifle that I wouldn't sell. So. Have a look at this action. We looked at it already, uh, but maybe it's a little more clear here in the studio. So you can see the receiver is quite long. This this rifle, I don't know, it's very light. It feels like a Kimber. Um, it's that safety bolt system, and I think I went over the operation of the of the action in the mountains. So I I won't go over that again. But you can you know you can get a clear idea that this is something quite unique. The barrel is beautifully made. It may remind you of a, of a Sako Black Bear, you know, the 85. They had different models with some pretty fancy fluting. And the other thing I was gonna say, you remember maybe 10, 20 years ago, I can't, I can't remember what the threshold decade was, but it used to be a big deal to get a rifle that shot you know, one inch groups. And now it's routine. Uh, a one inch group is, is routinely accomplished. And I would have to say this rifle, which is a 222, is even with this scope, but this is actually a dangerous game scope. It just fit nicely with this mount that I like. I can take it off and put it on very quickly because this is another self aiming rifle, no iron sights. So I have to have something to put on rifles quickly, especially if I find the time to run out and make a video. So then I, I, I'd want to be doing screws and rings. So this works perfectly. Uh, it's 30 millimeter, very easy to pop a new scope in here. And I'll, I'll find a better one. I was looking at different Vortex models. Something with more magnification is probably a good idea. Anyway, this 222 is kind of, it may be hard to believe it's kind of like a quarter minute of angle or a half, half minute of angle. There's no magic um, to shooting. Now I'm talking about a hundred yards, um, just bullet after bullet. It's just remarkable. So I'll probably be keeping this and it's kind of a sharp looking rig. I wanted to, you know, read who came up with this, this long receiver idea. And, um, you know, and how does it all tie together? But I, I didn't actually find any material on that, but I'll turn it around again. Oh, and the magazine, we looked at it in the mountains, but it's not a rotary um, magazine. You can see it's just a, it's one of the inline style magazines. And um, 
you know, if not for these flutes, it would be possible uh, to, to put some iron sights on. But uh, the point of, or one of the points I wanted to make was if you come across one of these, it may look unusual, but the operation is, is uh, well, fantastic and the accuracy remarkable. And maybe I'll turn it around one more time. Uh, the floor plate and everything, I mean, this is typical. It's made in Austria. Austria has always turned out fantastic rifles and Steyr, um, that's where you'll see it here. Uh, that's Steyr. And this is the ultralight model. And it, the operation, I, like I said, I won't go over it again, but I thought it's worth it for you to have a look. We have a lot of collectors on the channel. We have a lot of uh, people that live in Austria, Germany, all kinds of places in Europe, uh, quite a few people in Serbia. And if you see one of these, you might be inclined to, to sort of not buy it because of this unusual look. Uh, but I think that this does something with harmonics because that accuracy is out of this world. And that's not just me as a shooter. Uh, there was several different, well, a couple of different people. Anyhow, um, there it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a low power scope. It's one of those rifles where, and it has, um, um, it has an illuminated reticle. It's actually a orange circle that gets quite bright. I try to remember to actually disconnect it so that I don't have, don't use up the battery. Anyhow, um, I hope you find that interesting and, and useful. They're very hard to find. I don't think they sold that many. I checked the site. They don't seem to be making them anymore. And that probably is um, all I have to say. So thank you for watching. Sorry if it's a little bit scattered, but uh, 222 also, one of these rounds, people generally pick 223 because of readily available ammo. And I still like that 222. That is one very accurate cartridge as the Benchrest shooters knew years ago. Of course, it's been superseded by other cartridges, but still fantastic. All right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.